Joe Tamargo from wetheadpumprepair.com. All right, so we're here. I'm going to tell you and I'm going to show you how to change this uh, Hayward Super Pump bearings. Here's my boy Robert. What's up, man? Not how much. you doing? Okay. So in this video, I'm going to show you that you can buy a puller from us, right? Mm-hmm. We've got thousands and thousands of quality 6203 bearings in stock, bearing pullers in stock, and we're going to show you how to change the motor bearings. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is get going is we're going to remove the back end of this motor here. Okay, so if you have a Hayward Super Pump or UST 1152 or 1102 or an AO Smith motor just like this, you're going to want to loose these two bolts in the back, right? All right, now we also sell the bearing pullers and the bearings. Correct, Robert? Yes. So Ro what Robert's going to do is he's going to show you how to use the bearing puller and everything like that uh, when once we take his motor apart. So you've probably seen this in other videos where we've taken apart a million different motors. Okay, so here's the back. We always like to use this for our parts. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the stationary switch just like this, okay? We're also going to try to time this video. So at some point, we're probably going to be bragging like, oh my God, dude, we just took apart that motor in like three minutes. A.O. Smith does not want you to know this, right? Tell them, Robert. Oh, yeah. They don't want you to know this. They want you to buy a new motor, man. They're like, yo, dude, Joe, I can't believe this guy. How could he do this to us? Oh, my God. We want to sell them a new motor, right, dude? Yeah. Robert knows. Robert knows. Okay, so once we do that, we're going to pull apart this back motor switch. You've seen me do this on other videos, I am sure. Okay. Uh, you remove the back governor. You, if, you don't, if you don't know how to remove this back governor, you can go to wetheadpumprepair.com or the YouTube channel, and there'll be a video on there on how to remove the A.O. Smith governor. So once you remove the governor back here, which I'm doing, just can't get this last screw my finger on that. Something to go. It's all right. It's fell on the floor. So we're going to pull that out. We're going to pull this little center governor piece right out of here. Okay, there's your little clasp. We'll get the, uh, the branch here. Now, we're pretty fast. You know, this is kind of like watching the Rachel Ray show when she's like, hey, don't worry, it's, it's 10 meals in 10 minutes kind of thing. So, you know what I mean? It's, it's kind of like that. But, you know, we want to keep the video simple and, and quick. Now, there's plenty of other straight videos that will show you in, in time. Hold that right for me, man. All right, so what you're going to do now is I'm going to remove this back part of this governor, which is the, uh, the flathead screwdriver part. Now, like I said, if you don't know how to do this, you can go to YouTube or wetheadpumprepair.com and there'll be a video on how to actually remove the A.O. Smith governor. Now, once you remove the A.O. Smith governor, you have removed the capacitor and the stationary switch. The next thing you want to do is remove the four through bolts. Okay, now this is a new motor, so if you're watching and you're another pump shop, you're like, dude, how can you not showing customers on old stuff? Because, of course, dude, because... We have plenty of videos. We have like 230 videos with old motors. Like, you know what I mean? It's like kind of why you want to look at like, you know, a swimsuit model, you know what I mean? I mean, your grandmother's all cool and, sh and stuff and she makes the best corned beef sandwiches, you know? But, you know, you want to go to the beach, right? All right, so just imagine this motor being the beach. And Robert's like, wow, I still didn't get that, but I think I got it. And if you've seen Robert in another 223 videos, he probably still doesn't know what I'm talking about even after 200 videos, right? Robert's like, uh, I thought we fixed the motor, dude. We're going to the beach. No, we're not going to the beach, Robert. It was an expression called a metaphor. And if Robert would have stayed in school, he would have learned what a metaphor was. All right. So we got the fourth through balls out, right, man? Yep. All right, you got a hammer over here, man? No, no hammer. All right. So we're going to use a screwdriver right here. New motor, so pop that out right just like that. All right, so there you go. We have a 6203 bearing in the back. Now, in front here, you have another bolt. Take this out of the vice, bro. All right, you have another screw here. It's called a bearing retainer. We're just going to use the, uh, the nut driver to loosen this right up right here. Okay, so now if you have an older motor, this might be a little bit tougher, and you might need to, uh, you basically might need to, um, you might have to drill it out. So once you do that, there you go. I'm going to use the uh, back of a hammer handle to kind of tap this off now. Okay, there you go. There you go. Now once you do that... You can pop that right off, and you have a 6203 in the front. Now, this is a one and a half horsepower UST 1152 motor, okay, and which is basically an AO Smith Hayward Super Pump motor. You've seen us remove the governor now and the stationary switch, and now we're down to the core armature shaft. You got a 6203 in the front and a 6203 in the back. So, for all the haters out there, they're like, yo, dude, yo, it says China. What's up, China? We like, we like China. China is good stuff. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put this in the vise. Robert is now going to tighten this down in the vise. Right? And what we're going to do is we're going to show you how.
allowed to use the bearing puller that we actually sell. So Robert, here's that bearing puller. It's a three-jaw bearing puller. Okay, we sell them. Yes, they are from China. Like, listen, man, I know people like, oh, I hate Chinese stuff. Dude, seriously, you know any American companies that are making bearing pullers? Not only that, but it's, it's decent quality. It's for 19 bucks. Come on, you're not going to go out there and build a bearing puller for someone $19? Let's be real. If someone said to you, hey, man, I'll give you 19 bucks for a bearing puller, are you going to go construct it? Of course not. So this is a good bearing puller. It's, you know, entry level. It's not $200. And not only that, you buy a $20 bearing puller, $20 worth of bearings, you know, $10 seal and shipping. For $50, bucks, you are building your motor, and you're not spending $400. All right, so here's your bearing puller there. We're going to tighten this down device. Robert is going to demonstrate how to remove the front bearing. The back bearing is really easier. A lot of times with the back bearing, people are like, oh, dude, it's that small, blah, blah. It's a lot, you know, it's a lot easier. So Robert will do the front bearing because there's a fan involved and everything else. You know what I mean? So he'll show you the harder bearing. We have to take the clip off. Oh, yeah, there is a snap ring. Good point, man. There is a snap ring here. So in the front of your bearing, there's something called a snap ring. All right. Uh, there's the telephone. You can probably hear that in the background. So if right currently, if I was at my desk, I'd be like, hello. This is Joseph from Wedhead Pipe Repair. How can I help you? But we're doing a video and the phone is ringing. So if, I, if you're maybe one of those people that have called me and you're like, oh man, I always call that guy. This is why, because we're actually filming videos. All right, so let's keep it real here. There's a snap ring in here. And um, I have bad eyes, to be honest with you. And the light is really bright here. So we're going to pull the snap ring off real quick. If I could ever see it. I don't know if I can see this, dude. I didn't plan for this. Can you see that? My eyes are really bad. Okay, so here, you get that off. I can't see. All right, so Robert's going to take that off. While Robert takes off that snap ring, now, if you, don't, if you haven't seen that before, we also have that video, how to remove a snap ring um, on video. And there's a lot of close-up shots where you can actually see how I actually remove the snap ring. Now, Robert's going to see here with that snap ring. Now, in the meantime, while Robert removes the snap ring, I'm going to show you, if you have bought a bearing puller from us, it will come in a box just like this, okay? It is from China, but it's good quality. Um, it's going to come with a bunch of pieces. So there you go. Robert has removed the snap ring. Thank you, man. Good job. Nice job. Now, remember, two years ago, if you've been watching us or have, if you've subscribed, remember, you can go to YouTube. If you're not watching this right now or you're on Wedhead Pump Repair, you can hit the little YouTube button right there on the corner of this video, and that will bring you to YouTube. Or if you are on YouTube, you can just hit the subscribe button. Now, remember, two years ago, Robert couldn't do any of this. See, now, there you go. He's I can't see no man, man. I'm getting too old for this. So if you're a pump guy out there or a pool guy, get involved in a trailer like Robert because I can't see no more. It's kind of weird getting old. All right, so basically you'll have these three things that will come with the puller. Robert is going to mount that there, and he's, he's going to start removing those bearings while I show you how to rebuild his puller. Okay, so the first thing you have is a little star thing like this. You're going to want to take that with your, your center bolt, and you put your center bolt through it just like this, okay? There you go. So there's your first bolt just like this, all right? So that's, that'll be the first part of your puller. Now you have a bunch of these pieces in here. These are your, you, these are your swing joints. So you get yourself a nut. You put yourself a nut through just like that. Right through here. You'll put another uh, piece on the other side just like this. Okay, so you create this basically this swing. It's nice, pretty simple design. All right, and then you bolt it like that. Now you're going to do that three times. So you're going to have one swing joint here. Okay, you get another two pieces just like that. One in here. Now, Robert's setting up that puller, man. How you doing, man? Pretty good. All right. Oh, I just dropped that bolt, man. Not bad. All right, so there you go. Here's the bolt. You're going to swing it through just like that. Once again, you're going to bolt it right through here. Okay. Now, you probably think, oh, man, i got to put this together. Of course, man. You get up in that man cave, bro. You know what I mean? Turn a couple bolts, right? You know, people are like, oh, i got to put the bear and pull it together. Of course you can, dude. Like, I know you went to McDonald's and the cheese was in your burger. But you know what? You got to put your bearing pulling together, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, whatever. All right, so you get your third set right here. You get your bolt like this. Put your bolt through like that. Put it through here. Robert's lining How you doing, all right? Robert's doing it right there. He's lining it up. You get your third bolt. And you bolt it just on like that, okay? All right, there, there you go. So now you got one, two, three. You got the little three uh, swivel things. So now you want to go with the six inch. Okay, so you want to now put your jaws on. You'll take your one bolt like here, and you, what you do is you put it through one first here like this. You put it through your jaw, and then you pull it back a little, okay, just like this. And you put it like through this. There you go, like that. And then you'll bolt it on like this, okay? So while Robert's setting that up there, man, how you doing? Good. Robert's doing good. 
I've got one jaw on here too, and I'm going to tighten the front and the back. Okay, so here's my extension, so I can move my extension, all right? The next thing I'm going to do is the second one. All right, so I'm going to put it through here first, slip it through just like that. We want to make sure the jaw is going the right way. And we're going to pull it back like this. And we're going to slip it through, okay? So now i got my second puller jaw on. Tighten it there, tighten it there, so okay, now you can see I have one jaw, two jaw. Okay, now I'm going to put my third jaw on, right here, my third jaw. Brian Roberts going in, how you doing? Mm -hmm. Good. You doing good? Good. Now Robert did not bring an adjustable wrench, why well, I have no idea, so he's going to be trying to attempt this to use a middle, mini pair of channel locks. Which is even cooler because if he pulls it off with mini channel locks, that would be even cooler, right Robert? Yes. Alright, now you don't want to use channel locks, you don't want to use adjustable wrench, but for some reason Robert did not bring an adjustable wrench to the video shoot. All right, so Robert's removing that bearing. I'm putting the third, the third bolt in the jaw here. So I'm going to basically, basically put this through like this. Here you go. All right, see, there you go. There you go at home. I'm putting the third jaw through. I'm going to tighten my third bolt up just like that. All right, now I have assembled my three-jaw puller just like that. Thank you, my buddy Robert from Shanghai, China. Good man. These are great bearing pullers. Great plated. Look at that. Robert at the same time has removed the bearing. My man, look at that. So there you go. There you have it on film. It's almost like one of those QVC channel things, you know what I mean? Robert's backdrop is falling off the wall over here and touching him in the arm. But what are you gonna do, man, right? I mean, we try our best. So there you go. That's how you use the bearing puller, man. Take, just take that back to the wall, man, before the free people freak out. Alright, so there you go. The backdrop's falling off the wall, the bearing's coming off the pullers. There you go, Joe Tamargo from WetheadPumpRepair.com. We got the bearing coolers for $19.95. We have tons of 6203 bearings in stock. Bearing coolers, there you go, that's how you do it. Listen, for $50, you got a bearing puller, two bearings, seal, and the satisfaction of a man in your man cave, okay, that you can rebuild your pump. Because the other alternative is you go out and buy something for $400. Do you really wanna do that? They're like, honey, it's $400, we gotta spend it. I mean, Christmas is coming, you know? If your pool's closed already and you're washing this, think to yourself, man, yeah, my pump was kind of loud last year. Guess right, you go out to the man cave, get a few beers going, whatever you want to do, rebuild your pump, get the pride. You know, and for $50, you get yourself a new tool, some bearings, some seals, and you're good doing it good. All right, so this is Joe Tamarga from WetheadPumpRepair.com. All the parts, the bearing pull, the seals, the bearings, everything is available at WetheadPumpRepair.com. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all, please use the contact form on the website. Subscribe to our videos. And once again, empower yourself. That's it, man. Take it easy. This is Joe Tamargo from WetheadPumpRepair.com. Peace.